Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Richard Moglin and welcome to another Python for Finance tutorial. And today the program that we're going to be building is a green line value calculator. And this is the program that actually got me interested in learning Python for Finance. So I'm very excited to share it with you guys and hopefully we can all learn a little bit more about Python together. So if you're not familiar with what the green line values are, um, they're basically a part of my strategy and they signify a significant level of resistance. So to find them, and I've drawn a few in on this chart of ACMR, you have to go to a monthly chart. And then you draw in a green line whenever the stock forms a new all-time high and then rests for at least three months. So ACMR so far has had three uh, green lines, one right at its IPO, uh, one a few months later, and then one most recently in May of this year. And the reason that these are significant and why this is a good strategy is because a stock that forms a new all time high and then rests and consolidates for three months and then starts moving through that green line, that signifies that the stock has something special going on for it. And the buy point is right when it breaks through this green line on above average volume. So if we go to ACMR's recent green line, you can see that right at this point, it broke through, actually had a green dot as well, but it broke through on above average volume. And since then, it went on a very good run. Uh, let's see, up 130%. And since then, it's consolidated again and seems ready to make another move upwards. Um, so the reason that I'm making this Python program is because finding these green lines is a little bit tedious because you have to go to the monthly chart as I did, uh, find a new all-time high, click on it, find the high value here, which is 21.88, and then draw in the green line manually. Um, so to speed up this process, I thought I'd create a Python program that just spits out the values, and then I can directly just draw that on the screen. So to actually begin writing the program, we're gonna start with kind of the bare bones program that we've used kind of as a basis for all my different Python for Finance videos. And if you haven't watched those yet, and this is the first one of the series that you're watching, I highly recommend that you click the link in the description and watch the rest of them after this video. Uh, I cover a lot of different concepts that could be very useful for your trading style. Uh, but anyway, getting back to this video, um, we first import all the different modules that we're gonna need, then we activate the Yahoo Finance override, then we identify the start and end time for our Pandas data frame, and then we prompt the user to enter a stock ticker symbol. Um, and then we enter our main loop and we access the data frame for that time span. Um, and yeah, that's how we start. Um, and you might notice that this always gets daily data. And for the green line strategy, what we're gonna need is monthly data. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is make a new pandas data frame called DF month. And we're gonna set it equal to df dot group by parentheses uh, pd dot grouper parentheses frequency equals m for month and then we want the monthly high so we're gonna access the high column of the pandas data frame and we want the max of those monthly so that should sort that out um, and then we want to look at the values for those monthly highs to kind of compare them and find that all-time high. So we're going to say for index and value in DF month dot items. And we're going to say just for now, print value. Um, and then just to close off this while loop, and make sure it's not an infinite loop, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna, again, prompt the user for a stock after that. So saving that, um, we're gonna go to our command prompt and we're gonna run the program. So you can see, I just forgot a semicolon, this always happens, um, and let's run it again. So here it's gonna prompt us for a, a, uh, a stock and we're gonna do ACMR and you can see it's outputted all these different monthly, um, the highs of all the different months of this stock. And then it's prompt us for another stock, so we could enter another stock. AMD has a little bit more runtime, so it's got more monthly bars. 
Um, so that's good. Everything's working as it should. And now we, we are going to have to sort through those monthly data, um, data items and determine what is a new all time high. So first, before we enter this loop, we're going to need a couple different variables. Uh, we're going to need GL date. And we're going to set that equal to zero. We're going to need last GLV, which is going to be our most recent green line value. Uh, we're going to set that equal to zero as well. We're going to need current, um, current date equals don't know, and current GLV equals zero. Um, so let me explain what I'm going to be using each of these variables for. Uh, GL date is going to be, and let's actually make this lowercase. GL date is going to be um, the date of the most recent green line value. Um, last GLV is going to be the most recent green line value. Um, current date is going to be the current date of the green line value that the program will be keeping track of. And the current green line value is going to be the current green line value that it's keeping track of. Um, so in the end, what we're only going to care about is last GLV and GL date. And these are just used to kind of um, sort through the data in our if statements. Um, so the logic for this program is really where it gets complicated. Um, so first, we're going to have to check the all time high condition. So let's go ahead and delete this for now. And we're going to say if value is greater than current GLV, because we want to check if the current monthly high that the that the for loop is now at is greater than the current green line value that it has stored. Um, and then we're going to say if that is true, we're going to say current GL, GLV equals value. So set it equal to that if it is higher. And we're going to say current um, date equals index. So set um, the current date to the index, which is that um, that date. So next what we have to do is if value is less than current GLV, we're going to set um, counter equal to counter plus one. And you got to make sure it's within the if statements and got to make sure that you have semicolons. Um, and we're also going to say counter equals zero. So what counter is going to check for is whether or not three months have passed. Um, and that's because remember, if you go to the chart, you have to make sure that three months have passed since the green line before you can draw it in. Um, so what we're going to check for is whether or not the number of counter counters is equal to three. Um, so next, um, in this if statement, we're going to say if counter equal equals three, then we're going to um, say if current GLV is not equal to last GLV um, print current GLV and outside this if statement we're going to say GL date equals current date and we're going to say last GLV equals current GLV um, and finally we're going to say counter equals zero to reset the process and look for the next green line. So I want to make sure that it's clear why I have this if statement here within this overall if statement. And that's because we want to check if counter is equal to three um, while the current value is lower than the current green line. And that's because if you go to the chart, um, you only draw the green line as the stock is below it. And once it breaks through, it's, um, it's going to potentially form another green line. So that is why I have this if statement nested within this overall if statement. Um, and we actually have to add a um, few more conditions to this because we want to make sure that we aren't in this third month here. Um, so here we've got to say and index dot month 
does not equal now.month um, or index.year does not equal now.year. Um, and we need one more parentheses here. Uh, and here. Okay, so what this is doing is, is making sure that the current month isn't this third month here. Um, and it's basically saying that if it's a, um, a different month or a different year, then it's okay and a new green line is set. Um, and I may not have explained this perfectly, so please, if you're confused about the logic, uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll provide a written description of my logic, which hopefully will help you out. Um, but now that we've got that, um, we can actually go ahead and print um, print um, str last glv. Um, and let's see um, if we made any mistakes with some semicolons. Looks okay. So let's go ahead um, and quit our last program and do it again. So let's go ACMR. And you can see that we've got three different values here, 8.48, 15.6, and 21.88. And going through the charts, that's exactly what we were expecting to see. Um, and now all that's left is to print it out a little bit nicely for the user. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So going back to the program, um, instead of printing like this, um, we're gonna say if, um, and we don't need parentheses, last glv equals equals zero. So if there's no green lines, we're gonna say message equals um, stock plus has not formed a green line yet. And this is checking for the condition um, that something like PLMR, which has just been increasing since its IPO. And you can see that it still hasn't formed a green line, even though it's formed these kind of intermediate levels of resistance. Um, so that checks for that condition. And otherwise we're gonna say um, else message um, equals last green line. And we're also going to say the date on GL date. Um, so there we go. That's what we need to do. So let's go ahead and run it one more time. So quit this um, ACMR. Um, and it doesn't seem to be running that. And I didn't print the message. So let's go ahead and back here and say um, print message and that should fix it. So quitting this, we've got, let's see, ACMR. You can see it now prints out the last green line value and it gives you the date 531 when it happened. So everything's working exactly how we hoped, um, but there is some contingencies that we have to prepare for. So if we enter a stock like TWLO, which has had um, a history before its most recent IPO, you can see that something weird happens. We've got this huge number, 48,000, um, when it's never traded um, above 150. So you can see it's a recent IPO, um, and you can see that um, it's, it's green line from, this, um, from its Yahoo history happens on 2000, on February 2000. So we have to um, add in something up above to kind of sort out um, these weird values. So going back to the program, we have to go all the way to the top um, and we have to filter out those things up here. So what we're gonna do is say up here, df.drop um, df um, brackets, um, 
df brackets volume less than 1000 dot index and we're going to say in place equals true. Uh, so what this is doing is it's dropping um, any values in this pandas data frame that has volume of less than 1000 shares a day. So this gets rid of all those weird values. So let's save this and check if it worked. Quit. And we're going to check just if ACMR still works. Um, and you can see I didn't capitalize volume. So let's save that and run it again. ACMR. So that still works fine. And now TWLO, um, it now gives the correct value of 151. Let's, let's go ahead and check the monthly dates. Um, this is the high and you can see the high is 151. Um, so that is everything that we need to do for this program. Um, and there are different variations that I've um, created using this. Um, I've had um, kind of the input be a little bit different. So I've had an Excel file with a bunch of different symbols and then I run it and similar to our stock screener program, it outputs the green line value for all those different stocks. Um, and in the future, I plan to create a program that kind of alerts you when a stock is passing through its green line. So it sends you an email or text or something like that. Um, so if you would be interested in a program like that, uh, let me know by leaving a like on this video and leaving a comment as well. But other than that, thanks so much for watching. Um, thank you guys so much for the support in this series. It's, it's great. Um, and I'll see you guys in future videos.